x equals 6 to the x is the base function. And they want us to graph this. Good. How do I graph 6 to the x? Is it a function? Remember, the exponential function has two shapes, one that is increasing on all its domain and the other one that is decreasing on all its domain. Which one is this, 6 raised to the x? Yes, it is increasing because the base is greater than 1. All exponential functions with a base greater than 1 must be increasing, and pure exponential function has to cross at 1. Very good. Now, what transformation is when I change x into negative x? What transformation would that be? OK, so if you remember, positive y, negative y, x, negative x. With respect to, that's it. 6 raised to negative x. Graph the function and its asymptote. So the asymptote is still y equals 0, but at infinity this time. Uh, graph the asymptote is a dashed line. There is no need because it's the y-axis. I'm sorry, it's the x-axis, of course. Um, what is the domain? of 6 to negative x, like the domain of any exponential function. All your numbers, it's a friendly function. What about the range? Zero. Correct. So very good. Domain, negative infinity to the infinity, the range 0 to infinity. Very good. Say it again. The equation for the asymptote is y equals 0. Uh -oh. It's the horizontal, it's the x-axis. Uh -oh. At infinity only. Uh, let's look at problem 3. In problem three, if you remember, um, the model should be given. If they're not given, please ask, and I will give them to you. So there are two models, P1 plus R over N raised to NT, and the other one, A equals PE to RT. Now, what is the first one and what is the second one? The first one is when the interest is compounded, how many times a year? N times a year. And the other one that does not have n, what is it? It's continuously compound interest. Continuously compound interest. Because there is no n. Oops, even my little tent fell off. Okay, so we are asked, um, we are given the principal, which is 13,000. Um, we are given t equals two years. We are given 9% monthly. How much is n for 9% monthly? n is 12. And compounded continuously, the other one is 8.89 for continuous. Okay, compound interest. So we are asked to um, which of the two rates would yield the larger amount in two years. So the first one would be A equals 13,000, 1 plus 0 0.09 over 12 raised to 12 times 2. And the other one would be 13,000 times E raised to 0 0.089 times 2. So all we did was uh, plug in the numbers one more time. The P is the principal, which is 13,000. R is the interest in the first one, compounded 12 times a year, which is this 0 
and n is 12 times 2, which is 2 years. And the other one is the interest compounded continuously, so it's PERT, raised to RT. So let's put this in the graphing calculator, both of them, and see what we get. Okay, we don't need to put them in the, um, in the table, um, in the um, y equals, because there, are only one there is only one calculation for each. So 13,000, in parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.09 divided by 12, close the parentheses, power or caret, in parentheses, 12 times 2, and close. And press Enter. So we get this for interest compounded 12 times a year, monthly. Now for the other one, for continuously compound interest, it's different, so E2 in parentheses, uh, we have 0 0.089 and multiply by 2 and close the parentheses and press enter. So the first one gives 15,553, the second one gets 15,532. So what would you say is the better option for us? Even if it's just um, 20 bucks, plus or minus. Which one gives a bigger return on our investment? The first one. So we would prefer the interest to be compounded not continuously, but monthly. So this is better. It gives us a bigger amount. And there were, so the first one was 15553.38, and the other one was 15532.73. So the first one is better for us. Uh, we would like to look at number four. Is that a yes? Okay, very good. So let's look at number four. And we are given f of x, which is 565 multiplied by 1.026, everything raised to the x power. So we are told that um, 1975 represents x equals what? Zero. Since X is the number of years since 1975. Then uh, they want us, so this is in part A, they want us to find f of 0. In part B, they want us to find uh, 27, f of 27. Then they want us to find, in the year 2029, and part D, they want us to find in 2056. And... Um, and in part E, they want a comment. OK. So what about 2029 and 2056? How many years since 1975 is that? Nineteen twenty twenty uh, twenty twenty nine 2029 minus 2056 minus 1975 is very good. Again, we are going to this time because we are going to have to find four different values of this function. Let's put the function in y equals and get all of those. So in y equals, clear, whatever we had before, 565, open a parenthesis, 1.0. To six, close the parenthesis, and the power I personally put in parentheses at all times. And then go to second and table, and we want to plug in zero, and then we want to plug in 27, and then 54, and then 81. And the numbers are 565 million, 1130. Um, 2260 
and five four five one eight. Oh million. Okay. So now in part B we're asked to make a comment. What appears to be happening to the country's population every twenty seven years? Five hundred, a thousand, from a thousand to two thousand, from two thousand to four thousand. It appears that it, it is doubling. Let's see which one it is. There does not appear to be a pattern. Part B, it appears that the population is growing by a factor of three every 27 years. No. It appears that the population is decreasing. No. It appears that the population is growing by a factor of two every 27 years or it doubles. Very good. Is this clear? Any questions? Okay. Let's look at something else. Um, did we do problem five? We are given two functions and we are asked to show which one is closer to a certain value. Yes? Did we do that? Five. Okay, let's do it. So we are given two functions. So this is f of x equals 6.2 times 1.028 raised to x and g of x, a logistic growth model. 1 plus 6.1 e to negative 0.051x. Which function is better model for the percentage who were college graduates in, 20, in 20, 2006? And I see 2006 from the graph is 27.3 for 2006. So x represents numbers of years after 1950. So x equals 0 represents 1950. And we want in 2006. How many years is that? To 2006. x equals, I think it's 56, correct? Good. So let's put these two functions in the graphing calculator. And then we want to plug in what? We want to plug in 56, and if we get close to what? Whichever is the closest to which number, 27.3, we will consider it the best model for 2006. I don't know, I haven't checked for the other years, but for 2006, it will be better. Okay, so let's plug it in. In y equals again, clear everything. And first function, 6.2 parentheses, 1.028, close the parentheses and the power in parentheses, x. Okay, and the second function is 37.3 at the top, no parentheses, but the denominator needs to be in parentheses, 1 plus 6.1, e in parentheses, negative 0.051x. Close the parentheses, put the power, and close the parentheses down for the denominator. And now we go to second and table, and again, what do we plug in? Perfect. And the closest number to 27.3 is the one that is the better model for the year 2006. So which one of these two is the closest? The first model, which is f of x, or the second model, which is g of x? g of x, the second model, very good. So we will choose, choose g of x for 2006. I don't know. I can't conclude about the other ones because I haven't checked. Okay, um, uh, 
Uh, let's look at problem 13. The exponential model uh, a of t it should have been 13.4 e to 0 0.02 t describes the population a of a country in millions t years after 2003. So 2003 represents t equals 0. Use the model to determine when the population of the country will be 23 million. So how do I determine that? How do I determine when the population of this country will be 23 million? Very good. Awesome. So I said it equal to 23 million. Great. And now what do I do? First step. Always remember, clean it up. Simplify it. Clean it up. Always. That's the key. What should I do first? What do you think? I can't subtract because they are multiplied. I must divide by this number, 23 over 13.4 equals e to 0 0.02t. Only now I can do what? I have to apply natural log because the power has the exponent. Only if I apply natural log to both sides, I can bring down the power. So natural log 23 over 13.4 equals 0.02t times natural log e. But how much did we say was natural log e? Perfect. So that's why I don't write it anymore. And now I divide by 0.02. Natural log 23 over 13.4. Always remember when you get to the stage in which both sides are completely simplified and you want to bring down the power, only at that stage you apply natural log or common log. In this case, because the base is E, I really want to apply natural log. But it doesn't matter. The answer will be the same. OK. So uh, we have natural log. Uh, 23 divided by 13.4, close the parenthesis, and divide the whole thing by 0.02. And this tells us when the population will be 23 million. So t equals 27 years. But this is 27 from 2003. What does that mean? Which, which year will that be? Very good. OK, so now let's look at the last page one more time. Would you like to look at number 20, 21, or 22? Last page, 20, 21, 22. Don't forget to redo all these problems several times before the test. And I think we said that the test will be a week from today, correct? Or Monday. Did we say Monday or a week from today? Monday? Did we say Monday? 
Yes, we did send my say my thing. Yep. Uh, the 26th. No. Yes, it is the 26th. Okay, which problem? 19, 20, 21. We did a problem like 19 a few minutes ago at the beginning. 20, 21, 22. Which one? 22 it is. So we have 4 plus 10 plus 16 plus dot 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 6n minus 2. They say change it into a summation notation. Okay. What is the index? It doesn't matter which index you want to use. Let's say we use k. So Let's take a look here and see what happens when k is 1. 4 times 1 minus 2, I get 4. When k is 2, 12 minus 2, I get 10. When k is 3, 18 minus 2, I get 16. So obviously k starts at 1. Where does it end? Where is the upper limit? It's n. The upper limit is n. And of what? What will I have here? Yes? 6? But it has to be k. Because k moves from 1 to n. k minus 2. When k is 1, I get this term. When k is 2, I get this term. When k is 3, I get this term. When k is n, I get this term. That's why we use the, the index. Because the index goes from 1 to, through n. OK, let's also look at 21. 3n plus 2 factorial divided by 3n factorial. Which of these two is bigger? Good. So then I start with 3n plus 2, and then times 3n plus 1 times 3n factorial. Because then I have 3n minus 1 and 3n minus 2 and so on and so forth till 1. But I stop at 3n factorial. Can anyone say why? Because I can simplify it with the 1 in the at the bottom. And then I will distribute. And I have 9n squared. 3n plus 6n is plus 9n and plus 2. Okay, so we have time for one more. Let's let's do 20. We are given a1, which is 4, and we are given a recursive formula. 2 times a n minus 1 plus 3 for n greater than or equal to 2. Let's read this, what this means. This means that any term equals 2 times the term prior to it plus 3. And we want to identify four terms. Can anyone give us a1? Exactly. Can anyone tell us how to write a2? It has to be 2 multiplied by the previous term plus 3. 4 plus 3, which is 11. a3 must be 2 times the previous term, which is Perfect, plus 3. 22 plus 3 is 25. And the last one, a4, is 2 times the previous term, 25, and plus 3, which is 53.